Don't just haul the kids to soccer practice. Do it with style and luxury in the Mercedes GLS 580. I'm Tom Bulk with the Seattle International Auto Show, and this is quite a machine. Effectively, this is an S-Class SUV, and a reminder that Mercedes now has 13 sport utes to choose from when all the variants are considered. That's compared to six sedans. The GLS 580 here is positioned towards the top of the lineup. There's the more capable G-Wagon or Maybach if you want to spend more money. As expected, this is not priced like an economy vehicle. The GLS starts at around $113,000. This one, equipped the way a Mercedes really should be, goes for just under 127 grand. Now at that price, you really should cross shop. So you'd be looking at BMW X7, Cadillac Escalade, Land Rover Range Rover, Lexus LX, and if you're Scrooge McDuck and wanting to save a little money, maybe Volvo XC90. GLS has three rows. It seats six or seven, depending on bench or captain's chairs in row two. Major options on this one include a $1,750 white diamond paint job, $1,100 for the acoustic comfort package. I'd go for the $1,800 pinnacle trim package, not for the heated and cooled cup holders. It's the excellent head-up display. Very nice. After hearing the impressive Burmester 3D surround system, I'd have to spend $4,500 for that. If this were a GLS 450, it would run with a turbocharged 3-liter inline 6-cylinder. The 580 gets its substantial oomph from a 4-liter twin-turbo V8. Both powertrains are mild hybrids, by the way. There's 510 horsepower and 538 pound-feet of torque on tap. Startup is muted. The engine note is like rolling thunder in the distance. The familiar Mercedes transmission stock controls a nine-speed gearbox. The driver has full control. If they want, manual shifts are crisp and direct. There are extra gauges available. Formatic fully variable all-wheel drive is standard. So is Airmatic adaptive suspension. 7.9 inches of ground clearance can be hiked even higher. Among the drive modes is an off-road setting that has all the information necessary for tackling tough terrain or dirt roads leading to the summer house. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. All-wheel drive is not just for snow. It's also good for conditions like this. It's wet and sloppy. There's loads of leaves on the ground. This gives you extra traction. Remember, it doesn't help you stop, but it does help you go. If I were trying to hit 60 miles an hour in dry conditions, the 580 would probably do that in just under five seconds and would do it in a velvety smooth manner. To think this weighs just over 5,800 pounds, chances are S-Class sedan owners won't be pulling Airstreams and boats. GLS owners can, no fuss, no muss. Max towing is 7,700 pounds or 3,493 kilos. Yes, this is hybrid, but it's a mild hybrid and there is a turbocharged V8 underneath the hood. The EPA rates the fuel economy average at 16 miles per gallon, so not exactly frugal. The six-cylinder 450 averages 21 mpg. That's easier on the wallet. Or there's the EQS EV for emissions-free luxury. In the normal drive mode, steering is light, but still accurate. The GLS is supremely comfortable. Um, and this doesn't even have the optional $6,500 e-active body control system that has cameras that read the road ahead and tell the adaptive dampers what's about to happen. Um, really, can't imagine this being any more comfortable than it is. The list of standard active electronic safety tech, or ADAS, is long. Automatic emergency braking, blind spot warning, adaptive high beams, active steering assist, and an excellent lane keeping assist. Plus, attention assist monitors some 70 parameters of a driver's activity and suggests that drowsy ones pull over for a Starbucks break. All this should keep wealthy families out of harm's way. 
This being a mild hybrid, the automatic engine stop-start system is exceptionally well done. You almost don't even feel or hear it shutting down. And yeah, you can turn it off, but really, why would you? Because on startup, nearly imperceptible. Also, isn't silence what people want in luxury vehicles? Making the all-electric EQS something to consider. It's in the same price bracket. Do I even need to discuss the interior quality? In vehicles like this, Escalade, X7, and Lincoln Navigator, the materials and craftsmanship are going to be high. That's a given. Trim looks like it adds 100 pounds to the vehicle. One GLS standout is LED ambient lighting. Even during daytime hours, it pops without being distracting. Yes, the hue and brightness can be adjusted. A cool touch? Raise the cabin temperature and the lighting confirms it. These are the kind of details found in here. The surround view camera system works well for off-roading and Nordstrom parking garages. Heat and venting are standard in chairs that offer all-day comfort and support. Adaptive seats have adjustable bolsters, dial in more or less aggressiveness. And there's a massage setting, all standard. The bright, crisp, dual 12.3-inch screens are probably better than any computer display you own, and there's top-notch response. Mercedes calls their interface MBUX, and it's one of my favorites. It can be operated here and here if you don't like fingerprints. A solid number of hard buttons and switches, too. Many people will just stick to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. There's wireless charging, too. MBUX has great natural voice commands, some of the best in the automotive business. And yes, it does require a data plan, but anyone that can afford a GLS can swing the subscription. Um, this looks like it could haul furniture. So let's throw it a curveball. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Are there any antique stores nearby? Thinking. Here is what I found. Where do you want to go? Ah, oh, Mr. Johnson's Antiques. That sounds interesting. Row two can be a bench or captain's chair is a no-cost option. These seats are as comfortable as the fronts and they're heated. There's dual zone climate in this section, another in the row behind, pockets here and here, cup holders too, though one is kind of small. No built-in shades at this price. Phones can be charged. There's even a small slot for them to stash away. The standard glass roof lets in plenty of light. Kids can scamper between the cushions or wait 10 seconds or so while this happens. Child seats strapped here can be left in, which improves usability. Unbuckling those would be a big hassle. GLS doesn't ride overly high unless the air suspension is raised, so getting into the way back should be doable for just about anyone heading to steerage. Is it stretch out spacious back here? No, like nearly every three row SUV. And so you know, I'm five foot nine and the inseam of my Levi's is 32 inches. I have plenty of headroom with the mid row set about midway. My knee clears the seat back by a fraction of an inch, so it's okay. Feet go underneath the seats and down the middle, so it's okay back here. And one thing, normally the third row is very, very low and your knees are up in your face. Not so much here. It's kind of raised up a little bit. Uh, the cushion is a little short, but it's good back here. At 17 and a half cubic feet, three carry-on sized suitcases will fit back here with all the seats filled. That's pretty common. A security shade stashes nicely here. The air suspension can be lowered from the bumper for easier loading. And since the floor is raised up more than a minivan, power to drop and raise is helpful, especially for petite moms. Now there's an average of 46 cubic feet of cargo space. It depends on where the mid row is set. No need to go around to the back doors to drop row two. This is what you get when you spend over a hundred grand on an SUV. Max cargo space is nearly 85 cubic feet and the floor is effectively flat. I understand why upwardly mobile families would want to arrive in one of these. The GLS 580 is powerful, controlled, and luxurious. It'll pamper the whole family, no matter where they travel. 
Check with your local Mercedes dealership for a test drive to experience three rows of high-end goodness. For the Seattle International Auto Show, I'm Tom Volk.